I then got this sense of one thing moving and relating to on another plane, as it were, um, uh, the, the effect that colours and, and shapes have on each other, not in, in a formal way, uh, like perspective or things being shorter or taller, but, but actually a movement on the surface of the canvas as it, as it appeared visually. And um, so I, I took, that became related to everything that Alberto did as well. And I came back to London after the year in Italy and I took a flight in Montague Square where that was in the 50s and that's where I did, and there are photographs of those, the first abstract paintings that I, I felt were as I wanted them to be. And um, then at the end of that time, I think I had to vacate the flats. It was needed for something else. And I went to New York and had a show with Gampels in um, the Seidenberg galleries. And uh, on return, moved to British Grove in Hammersmith briefly for a year. And during that year, went to the local library and got out a book, I think by John Underwood, on African art and became fascinated by the asymmetry of, of, the, of, the, sculpt, of the structures in, in the sculpture and also in, in the wall hanging. And, uh, well, the, the, the strange pulls and pushes which weren't on an even sort of line as it were but pulled each other so clearly and, and uh, where one could follow th the the, um, the structural tensions, and I did a series of works like this one, which very close in appearance to n not as good as but a, an African mask, but it did sort of demonstrated for me um, the things that I was looking at. Very difficult with a canvas that size to get attention on it. Yeah. Did you use the pliers?
others. It's exciting, but I think it's I think it's the other one more turn is better. Really. being there with really a different um, turn on. Sandra Blow speaking, and I think on the 25th of January, round about then, he ordered um, some lenses, uh, uh, um, an, an enlarging lenses for my Hasselblad, and he said it should have arrived in two weeks. Well, it's now the 18th of February, and it's that. He, he did, he did um, loan us one temporarily, but I, I've been not glad to get the one that's been ordered. Yes, it's a um, our camera is a 500cm and we, um, what did we order, Ken? Do you know what it was called? Uh, it, it 
you say that like that? If it was leaning in. Yeah, and then staple it and then cut it at the top, cut it off at the top. Yeah, it's better because there was more blue before. I think you should, you should sort of <coughs> leave it now for a while. Or yeah. we'll paint the rest of it in or prepare.
so marvellous really is it's when you sweat over it for days and days and hundreds of photographs and clothes and, and try to fill it out with this and then it's finished and somebody just walks in and sees it. <laughs> it's a huge Yes, and you know, it's very yeah, hard work. Well, that's it's all, uh, yeah, concentrated effort. Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about, really. Anyway. Yeah. I began then to have an awareness of what he was talking about and what was happening in a work when Victoria was space affected <coughs> what was going on. And it's very hard to put into words because I don't think of it in terms of words. I think of it in terms of literally of what I see and what I notice is going on. And, um, and so therefore, the best I can say is that, that um, it it's very, for example, easy to see in Cezanne where certain areas certainly affect and move with other areas. And I think <coughs> that is the basis of pictorial space in abstract art, or Cezanne's work. And um, it's become part of, of, of all I do, except there have been additions and further awarenesses of things like in the late 50s, African art began to influence me <clears throat> and the what I call asymmetric or unbalanced a structure in which there isn't an evenness of balance but a <clears throat> pulls and pushes as I think of it as and <clears throat> then afterwards I, I later years I became very aware of actual physical biological um, <clears throat> behaviour. What I really mean is a sense of, of balance, the way that every movement we make is a kind of balancing act, and when we walk, and when we sit, and even our lives, the way we live our lives and our relationships, there's a balance in all our lives between us and our surroundings and, and being in the world. And, uh, of one thing moving and relating to on another plane as it were um, uh, the effect that colours and, and shapes have on each other and not in, in a formal way like perspective or things being shorter or taller but, but actually a movement on the surface of the canvas as it, as it appeared visually and um, so I, I took that became related to everything that Alberto did as well and I came back to London after the year in Italy and I took a flight in Montague Square where that was in the 50s and that's where I did and their photographs were those the first abstract paintings that I I felt were as I wanted them to be and um, then at the end of that time I think I had to vacate the flats it was needed for something else and I went to New York and had a show with Gampels in um, the Seidenberg Galleries and uh, on return moved to British Grove in Hammersmith briefly for a year and during that year went to the local library and got out a book I think by John Underwood on African art and became fascinated by the asymmetry of, of the of the, of the structures 
in, in the sculpture and also in, in the wall hangings. Uh, well, the, 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 these strange pulls and pushes which weren't on an even sort of line as it were but pulled each other so clearly and, and uh, where one could follow the, 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 um, the structural tensions. And I did a series of works like this one, which very close in appearance to, not as good as, but a, an African mask, but it, it sort of demonstrated for me um, the things that I was looking at. <laughs> Very difficult with a canvas that size to get attention on it. Yeah. Did you use the pliers? It's exciting, but I think it's I think it's the other one more turn is better. Really.
It's covered with tomatoes. Right. It's it, well, it's Sandra Blow speaking, and I think on the 25th of January, round about then, he ordered um, some lenses, uh, uh, um, um, an, an enlarging lenses for my Hasselblad, and he said it should have arrived in two weeks. Well, it's now the 18th of February, and it's there. He, he did he did um, loan us one temporarily, but I I did not glad to get the one that's been ordered. Yes, it's a, um, our camera is a 500 cm, and we um, what did we order, Ken? Do you know what it was called? Finished that white there. Well, I'd like to look at it. It's still not sliding. It's not what? Sliding, you know. 
Yeah, I did it with a trivial more brow. You mean you want the whole thing to be rolled that way? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, you know the bottom, everybody in that brow. But have you got enough ground bottom to... Oh yes, you can. Well that's good. It is good, I've got me on. Sort of from there right up to the top in a straight line. I think we've lost something. I think that, that's not big enough. It won't, it won't, that's wrong. You start lower down. Start there. And then start going in towards the top. So just, you just add a bit at the top. Add a bit? Well, to make it... Um, you want the to, left it's side... It's not exactly the starting here. Do you want to go Yes, there? I want to start there. What? Start there. Yeah. And if you slip... Slim that down a bit. Yeah, and then staple it and then cut it at the top, cut it off at the top. <laughs> ah, I've got staples. This is called working at the cold face. <laughs> you are a seven boy. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking up. Is it? Yeah. Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Is it 
No, back, back, back. No, not there. There, that's it. Oh, this one? Yeah. Well, you, I can't do this. Right, well, don't, don't fall off the ladder. You're in a funny position there. What? Okay, that's it now. This is closest down here. Yeah, it's better because there was more blue before. Mm -hmm. I think you should, you should sort of <coughs> leave it now for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or paint the rest of it in or prepare. so marvellous really is it's when you sweat over it for days and days and hundreds of photographs and photos and, and try to fill it out with this and then it's finished and somebody just walks in and sees it. It's a huge flash really. You know, it's in his brain. Yes. It's very hard work. Well, that's it's all you know, a concentrated effort. Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about really. Anyway. 
Um, I began then to have an awareness of what he was talking about and what was happening in a work when pictorial space affected <clears throat> what was going on. And it's very hard to put into words because I don't think of it in terms of words. I think of it in terms of literally of what I see and what I notice is going on. And, um, and so therefore, the best I can say is that, that um, it... It's very, for example, easy to see in Cezanne where certain areas certainly affect and move with other areas. And I think <clears throat> that is the basis of pictorial space in abstract art, as Cezanne's work. And um, it's become part of, of, of all I do, except there have been additions and further awarenesses of things like in the late 50s, African art began to influence me <clears throat> and the what I call asymmetric or unbalanced a structure in which there isn't an evenness of balance but a <clears throat> pulls and pushes as I think of it as and <clears throat> then afterwards I, I later years I became very aware of actual physical biological um, <clears throat> behaviour and it, what I really mean is a sense of of balance the way that every movement we make is a kind of balancing act and when we walk and when we sit and even our lives the way we live our lives and our relationships there's a balance in all our lives between us and our surroundings and, and being in the world and, and